Hello everybody, welcome to Rome. I'm excited to have you join me on this new adventure. This iconic city is filled with history, culture, and delicious food. We've only got four days here and we want to see everything. Let's check out the list together, shall we? Vatican City is one of the top highlights, but here's the catch. Without an online ticket, you could be waiting up to two hours just to get in. We didn't manage to grab one, so let's see if we can actually still make it. Plus, we've got the Colosseum still standing after countless earthquakes, the serene Tiber River, the iconic Trevi Fountain, and wow, the list just keeps growing. Think we can fit it all in? Let's find out. And where travel? Vida. Hi, I'm Chris with Travel Vida, ready to break free from the ordinary? Join me as we dive into world wonders, savor exotic flavors, and chase breathtaking views, one forgettable adventure at a time. Let's explore the world together. Here we are in Rome. On our way to the hotel, we cruise by the altar of the Fatherland, Rome's majestic centerpiece. The Victor Emmanuel II monument instantly grabs your attention with its stunning bronze equestrian statue towering above. And just below, the tomb of the unknown soldier stands as a powerful tribute to the brave souls who gave everything for their country. We've only just begun and there's already so much history to dive into. Fascinating, right? This is the entrance to our, our hotel here. It's, I think it's like a, a couple uh, that owns a, a floor or a section of a floor and they have, I would say, probably five different hotel rooms. Quite small, very uh, quaint, charming. Um, we'll uh, try to get you some more video. We got in and we just kind of threw our stuff down and unpacked and kind of made the mess of room. But uh, it's a little on the smaller side, so we don't have space for everything everywhere, especially when we're working, we have laptops, and, uh, recording equipment and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we'll go check it out and uh, let you guys see it as well. So we just arrived to the hotel here in Rome and there are multiple rooms in this place. And you've never seen a room like this before. If you have, tell me I'm wrong in the comments. Check out the decor. Each room is themed. We did not ask for the flower room, but we got the flower room. <laughs> Checking out the bathroom here. And check this room. <laughs> Very quaint. Leslie was impressed. I think that's a connecting door. Very interesting. So we had to come through, I think three or four locked doors in order to get into this place. We got a restaurant downstairs and we're right in the city center. Should be a fun four days. This is the view from our room. So coming back to Rome, I've been a couple times before. It uh, always kind of brings chills down my spine. And when you think about the history here, it's just uh, incredible. But this is Leslie's first time in Rome. And um, I know that she's excited. What do you think of Rome so far? I have a lot of expectations, but yes, Four days and then our next stop, we'll, we'll leave that to the end of the video. It's going to be a little surprise, but uh, yeah, it's been a big trip. This is uh, about two months in total, this trip, and uh, this is just one of the stops, but uh, glad we're going to have about four days here in Rome. Amazing city. So I had to get some work done and uh, Leslie went to meet a friend of hers from, from Peru and uh, just finished. So now I'm going to grab something to eat and get some Italian food, obviously, and had her start off with some wine, which is very good. This was recommended by the waiter. Uh, good recommendation. Really good. And uh, yeah. Just hanging outside. It's uh, warm enough so I can be out here with just this jacket. It's a little cool, but uh, not too bad. But a great way to start off the night.
All right, we're heading over to uh, Trevi Fountain. We're pretty close to there. It's only about a seven minute walk for us. So let's go check that out. And um, you know, it's funny because I've been here a couple times. This is my third time here in Rome, but I've never been to Trevi Fountain. So uh, looking forward to that as well as some of the other sites. So let's go. Here I am at the Trevi Fountain, one of the most popular spots in Rome, and you can see why. People from all over the world come to admire this beautiful fountain. It's famous for its iconic sculpture of Neptune, the Roman god of the sea, surrounded by other mythical figures. The water here actually comes from the Aqua Vergine Aqueduct, which has been in use since ancient times. And of course, there's the fun tradition of tossing a coin into the fountain. They say if you do, you're guaranteed to come back to Rome one day. Here's a fun fact. Tours toss about 3,000 euros in change in the fountain every day. That adds up to about 1 million euros a year, and all that money goes to charity. Oh, and in case you're wondering, it's totally illegal to steal these coins. All right, Trevi Fountain, beautiful. Bigger than I thought it would be. Um, now we're going to, where are we going, this Pantheon? The Pantheon. So this is another six minute walk or so from where we just were, so we're gonna go check it out. On our way to the Pantheon, we find the church of St. Ignatius of Loyola. It's a 17th century church, a must visit for those interested in art, architecture, and the history of the Jesuits. Here we are at the Pantheon, one of Rome's most impressive sites. This place was originally built as a temple for all the gods of ancient Rome, and it's been standing for almost 2,000 years. Seriously, it's a true marvel of ancient engineering and architecture. What's really amazing is how well it's preserved. It is one of the best you'll find anywhere in the world. The dome, the columns, everything just takes you back in time. It's a must see when you're in Rome. Yeah, we didn't go in, but uh, it's all right. We got the outside and now we're heading to the Colosseum. Here we are at the Colosseum and wow, this place is massive. It's the largest amphitheater ever built, made from concrete and sand, and was once a spot for epic events like gladiator battles, mock sea fights, animal hunts, and even executions. Back in its prime, the Colosseum could hold between 50 and 80,000 spectators. Crazy, right? And it's got 80 entrances, so they could pack in huge crowds for the games. Fun fact, all the games are free because the emperors used them to win favor with the public. For being almost 2,000 years old, it's in pretty good shape. Even though several earthquakes rocked the Colosseum, especially on the south side, the rubble from those quakes was actually used to build other parts of Rome, like churches and palaces. Since the 19th century, they've been working on preservation and restoration projects. So let me know down in the comments who here has a favorite movie called The Gladiator. I do. Definitely looks a lot different inside. I have been here before, but it's been, I just kind of 13 years. So um, I'm excited to go back in with Leslie and get her thoughts. Uh, it's just, uh, it's a beautiful Coliseum. Lots of history here. Not all good for all people or animals, but nonetheless, spectacular. Of course, you can't visit Italy and not try the famous gelato. Look at all these flavors. So you're ready to dig into this? <laughs> now we're heading to the Spanish square, but on the way we pass the Mignanelli square where you can find the column of the Immaculate Conception. It was inaugurated back in 1857 and stands about 12 meters tall with a diameter of about one and a half meters. We finally reached the Spanish Square. It's located at the base of the famous Spanish Steps. 
The square got its name from the Spanish palace, Piazza di Spagna, which is home to the Embassy of Spain. As for the Spanish Steps, they're one of the most iconic spots in all of Rome. The Steps have a deep symbolic meaning, representing the close connection between the sacred and the eternal city. Fun fact, they're the longest and widest staircase in all of Europe. If you're visiting in spring or summer, expect crowds. This park gets packed with both tourists and locals. And just a heads up, since 2019, you're not allowed to sit on the steps anymore. They put in fines to protect the UNESCO site because the marble was starting to get worn and damaged. And yeah, if you get caught eating and uh, sitting on the steps, the fines can be pretty hefty, so you've been warned. So we're gonna go in style here to the Vatican. Uh, we're getting our, our own little horse and carriage ride. Costs us 100 euros, but uh, we're gonna go in style. Let's check it out. Yeah, a couple of chihuahuas wanted to take on the horse. Uh, my money is on the chihuahua, always, yeah. <laughs> this is Les' first time in the horse carriage. I think it is for me too. What do you think? Do you like it? <laughs> yeah, it's a little better than walking. Piazza. Now we're passing through Piazza del Popolo, which means People's Square. It's a gorgeous spot surrounded by stunning buildings. You've got the twin churches, Santa Maria in Monte Santo and Santa Maria di Miracoli, right in front of you. Forgive me if I mispronounced that. And in the center of the square is an obelisk from the Flaminian Circus. It's a beautiful historic place just to take in the atmosphere and admire the architecture. After our amazing carriage ride, we're now heading to the Tiber River for a change of pace. Here are some fun facts about the river. It's the third longest in Italy, flowing right through the center of Rome and all the way to the Tyrian Sea. It's such an important river for central Italy, and it's also a big tourist attraction. There's plenty you can do here, boat tours, swimming, or just soaking in the views from the shore. We did decide to go for a boat ride tour tomorrow, which is a great way to see the city from a totally different angle. As we cruise along, we'll be learning about Rome's history and landmarks from our guide. Definitely one of the more scenic and relaxing ways to explore, a way to see. Now, as we continue our walk, we've come across the Castle of the Holy Angel. This towering cylindrical fortress sits right on the Tiber River and is one of Rome's most iconic landmarks. Built nearly 2,000 years ago as a mausoleum for Emperor Hadrian, it has taken many roles over the centuries, from a military fortress to a papel residence and even a prison. The history packed into this palace is incredible. Next up on our tour is Vatican City, the smallest independent state in the world located right within Rome. It's the spiritual and administrative heart of the Catholic Church and the official residence of the Pope. Even though it's tiny in size, Vatican City is packed with history, art, and culture. The highlight here is the St. Petersburg Basilica, the largest church in the world and an absolute must-see when visiting Rome. This stunning piece of Renaissance architecture is named after the St. Peter one of the Jesus 12 apostles and is believed to be built over the tomb. Whether you're in for history, religion, or just beautiful buildings, Vatican City is an unforgettable stop. Les, are you ready for a dessert? Post today? But you don't want tiramisu. What do you want? Uh, 
gelato. All right, vamos a ver. What dessert will Leslie have? All right, my favorite is definitely tiramisu, so I get to try that here too. Every place is a different, so we'll see how it is here. Okay, Chris va a probar el famoso limoncello. Es como un digestivo a base de limón y con un licor, así que Chris. Vamos a probar. I mean, just for the digestive aspect of it, not for the alcohol content. Que para llegar a tu punto. Well, I was doing just either 70 or 50, so... Más fuerte que otro, pero ahí me gusta. Sí. Probamos en la mañana uno, pero le ha parecido más fuerte el de ahorita. When she said mañana, what she really meant was 3 p.m. Yeah. Ok. Salud. Now we can't eat it. I mean, it's too beautiful. Wow, this depends on you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And we have the romantic rose. <laughs> Time for Leslie and I to have a nightcap. <laughs> so we get a different feel here in the night. This line, oof, it just goes. I don't even see the end of the line, but it goes all the way around. And then as you get closer, it kind of does a bunch of loop de loops. Yeah. Uh, muy loco. And there's security. Yeah, uh, no gracias. Well, this is day two of uh, attempting to go to the St. Petersburg Basilica. That line is just too much. <laughs> Guess uh, we'll have to come back, huh, Les? Yeah, I love the line. I mean, we're just gonna have to come back and hit all the sites. We don't want Leslie to miss out on the Basilica or the Vatican. So today was uh, free entrance to the Vatican Museum. Uh, I believe Sistine Chapel as well, which is connected. And, uh, they stopped letting people in at two o'clock, so uh, we're, we're past that now. So we didn't get into the Vatican this time either. <laughs> planning people, planning. Um, <laughs> I don't know what else we can do apart from sleeping pills to get on uh, Europe time, but it's a little bit challenging when we are six or seven hours behind uh, most of Europe. But yeah, lesson learned. All right, so we got ourselves a Hop on, hop off, uh, boat ride. It's about an hour long. We ran to the boat, hoping to get on, and they took off literally seconds before we got here. Um, but that's okay, they come every 15, 20 minutes, so we're waiting on our boat. And we'll do a Tigre uh, boat ride, which I always enjoy anytime I've gone to a city and jumped on a boat. It's a great way to see some of Rome, and um, looking forward to it. Listo, Wes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're both a little huffing and puffing, a little tired. Buongiorno. <laughs> All 
right, we are getting close to the port of Rome, uh, Cittadella Vecchia, and we are going on the Regent Splendor. We are so excited. This is gonna be a Rome to Athens cruise, and we'll be stopping in Turkey. We're gonna end our cruise in Athens before we continue our travel adventures. Les, are you excited? She's a little tired, but she's excited, trust me. We've been talking about it. <laughs> All right, so the adventure begins. We're leaving Rome. Rome was great. Um, definitely not enough time here, but you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. But we're excited, we're on our way, we're getting close, so let's go. Beautiful Rome countryside. And that wraps up our amazing tour of Rome. I hope you enjoyed exploring these iconic spots with me. If you want to see more of my adventures, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out any of our future travels. There's so much more to come and I can't wait to take you along with me. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.